It is finally the conclusion of Personal Rig Update 2015. Yes, I know it is 2016 now. That's not the point. The point is that it started in 2015. Today is all about the final deployment in the cabinet, in the closet. So let's make it happen. A Pacers AS720 is a dual interface USB 3.1 Type-C equipped SSD with read speeds of up to 540 megabytes per second. Check out the link in the video description to learn more. Yeah, let's just like tip it. Okay, well I didn't really do anything. Uh, now I gotta load up all the other junk into the back of the truck here. So this is actually our first look at my wife's machine. So it also had the front bezel of the same case uh, airbrushed by our neighbor here, neighbor Steve. Let's get this baby loaded up too. Okay. Looking good. Ah, oh no. Need an optical drive. Ooh, light scribe. Okay, so here's the situation. There's actually a lot to do. First, I've got to get this roofless bastard up the stairs. I have straight up no idea how that's happening. These PCs, this UPS, these rails, these monitors all need to go up the stairs as well. This NAS needs the correct hardware put inside it. And finally, all of the gear that we are no longer using in here needs to GTFO. So let's get down to it, shall we? Okay, well this thing weighs a metric shed load, but there are some ways that I can significantly reduce its weight than by removing as many of the outer panels and inner components as I can before I try and take it up the stairs. Can you move? Thank you. I need more leverage. Oh, more. Oh, okay. More traction, or something. I need more something. This is what I hate about camera people. They never lend a hand. They just sit there and watch. I think what I need right now is some Nikki V's lifting tips. All right, Nikki V here, back with another moving tip. Okay, so we got this big ass thing here. What we want to do is lift with our back, twist, jerk in a you know jerking motion. He knows the most ergonomic way to do this. Go to sleep. He's supposed to be napping. Okay, I'm actually gonna have to go into his room in order to tilt this up. Okay, sorry honey, go back to bed. Oh wow, that's a really tight fit. Um. Okay, it looks like this is going to fit. That's good. Man, this stuff is heavy. Okay, so this and the other one in the room in there already are the Clay Power uh, 1000 volt amp UPSs that I'm gonna be using for the two systems in there. My system gets its own because it's a little bit more powerful. And then my wife's is gonna share her UPS with the, uh, the server slash NAS. Wife personal rig. Oh wow, this one's a lot heavier. Okay. Pro tip, uh, don't, don't carry rack mount cases by the mounting rail. And Acer said, let there be monitor upgrades. And there were, and it was good. And finally, of course, none of this is staying here. It's all gonna be rack mounted. So here are my rails. So I've been meaning to pull out some of the consumer grade gear that I've had in this server for quite some time. This WS board is a great board, doesn't support ECC memory. This RAID card, Great RAID card, doesn't properly support monitoring the disc. And then I've replaced all that stuff with a more suitable configuration. So while I don't have the ball and six or eight terabyte hard drives that I do at the office, I do have one terabyte WD blacks and I am using an enterprise grade SSD cache in RAID 1 to allow me to get the best possible performance out of the, yes, 
the you thought they were retired but they're not emulex 10 gigabit network card so i'm actually going to be using those combined with the onboard NICs in order to enable not 10 gigabit but at least faster than one gigabit transfers between all the rack mounted computers just using um, single cables from them to each other and actually not having them go through the router or the switch at all I changed up the motherboard to uh, one that has remote management, so I've added a little IKVM module right there. I've changed out to ECC memory, not really necessary with Unraid, but I want the utmost instability. I'm going to be running VMs on here so that I can have stuff like my Air Video server running on Windows, um, and then I can have stuff like Crash Plan running in a Docker container. There's a lot of functionality here. I may do a follow-up video on just this machine, and then I'm running a Xeon processor so that I can take advantage of that ECC RAM. And then it uses a very similar case to Clover Server, actually. It's just the 12-bay versus the 8-bay one because at home I don't have those same high-capacity drives, so if I want any storage at all, I need to have uh, a few more expansion bays there. Okay, so now I gotta clear out this corner, and I really hope you guys either don't look too closely at or don't judge me for my power setup in here. I am gonna be working on something a little bit better than a power bar run through the wall in the future. Okay, so most of the network cables running into the next room over there actually need to go away because all of the networking is pretty much gonna stay in here now. Yep, that's my, that's my wall hole. Oh no, I pulled out the nails. This is the world's most ghetto wall mount. So step one is gonna be our UPS battery backups. So we're gonna put these on the bottom because they're really heavy, they're a pain in the butt to, uh, to move. You don't want your thing ending up being all top heavy. And the other main reason is that I don't have shelves for them, so I need to sit them on the bottom of the unit so that the entire weight isn't being borne by these puppies. There we go. Okay, one down. Second UPS, here we go. So now all that's left to do is plug those in to the wall, and then all my other devices can plug into those for power, so I don't actually have to get back here anymore. Okay, so for those of you who haven't played around with rack mount stuff before, basically you take this inner slide, you pop the little latch here, all this without slicing your fingers open. And then these rails mount to the side of your case with the screws that are included with the rails. Then you take the other sides of the rails and you mount these inside your cabinet, hopefully in the right position, which is not always easy. Wow, this is a really shallow cabinet. I didn't realize these weren't the same depth as the ones at the office. That's okay, that is a very minor curveball. Nope, I'm one spot high. Of course I am. Yeah, it needs to go down just a touch. So weird. I wanted to work up a sweat today, I was thinking I could go to the gym today or I could uh, mount some server crap. Can this just stay in place, please? Right, fit is fine, as long as it's a fit. That's weird, what are we hitting? Maybe if we just give it the old, ah, there we go. Three units rack mounted. Easy, okay, it's okay, it gets easier. These rails are so much friggin' better. They lock on like that, no nonsense, just boop. Let's do this one now. Now, these ones are a bit more finicky to align here. I can live with that for the benefits that they give. There we go. Look at that. Man, I love these rails. It comes free of the entire thing, so you can just go boop. I'm working on the wife PC. Slide that baby back in there. And there it is. Okay. Last one. Man, I like those rails better. <laughs> okay. Oh, I put them backwards. <laughs> Fortunately, these are really fast to turn around. 
it's in. So let's get it all wired up then. I'm probably gonna get ear mounts for the Ubiquiti router as well as the Netgear switch at some point. I am gonna give myself another power bar as well up here. I have a more elegant solution at the office, but this actually isn't too bad. I'm just gonna hook those up on top here. UPSs are on. Let's get networking hooked up. Okay, this is going well now. Ethernet for waifu PC. I mean, okay. Overall, not perfect cable management. Still needs some work. Yeah, this is as good as it's gonna be for now. Okay, so with everything hooked up, it is finally time for the secret sauce, the magic bullet, if you will. And those of you who have been following from the beginning will already know this, but I've had a lot of people asking me who have tuned into Personal Rig Update 2015 later, how are you planning to get all of your IO into the next room? One optical Thunderbolt cable per system from Corning. That's why I added those ASUS Thunderbolt cards to the systems. So all I've got to do is run these puppies through the wall, and in theory, we're pretty much off to the races. How much is left? Okay. Okay, now obviously a single Thunderbolt cable, no matter how magical, is gonna need something on the other end to make it work. So that is where these come in. These are Thunderbolt hubs from Elgato. Uh, they've got three USB 3 ports. They've got mic and headphone jacks. They've got Thunderbolt pass-through if you want to daisy chain more stuff. And if you wanted, they've got an HDMI out as well as Ethernet. If we're gonna use Thunderbolt 2 display port to go straight to our monitor. And that is all the I.O. for the computer. Again, cable management not done, but it is somewhat moment of truth time. Oh, I hope this works. Here it is. Theoretically, perfect silence with no performance compromise. Whoa, it worked right away. What were the friggin' odds of that? Nothing ever works on the first try for me. All we've got to do, in theory, is get some Thunderbolt drivers installed on the system, which I have to do from over here. Ah, oh, yes. Always connect Elgato Thunderbolt dock. Okay. Hey, look at that. Keyboard's working. It worked once. Now we just have to do it again. All that's left is to run one more Thunderbolt cable and we are pretty much off to the races. Uh, someone was asking from my tweet the other night uh, what desk this was. And the answer is it is a desk sawed in half full of cardboard. For years. For years I have pursued silent computing. And in the end, Thunderbolt was the answer. No amount of water cooling ever made it quite good enough. And people asked me, gee Linus, why would you care about having a window on a rack mount case? That's why, suckers. That's why. Because that looks flippin' awesome. So this one's actually relatively tested. I have at least tried the ASUS Thunderbolt card on this one. Okay, let's just give her the old reboot and see what happens. Maybe something was just jostled loose in shipping and I can just, oh, hello. Okay, let's find out what postcode A2 means. CPU fan error, oh, that's no big deal. I have a CPU fan, it's water cooled. In theory, we should be fine this time. Let's go up there. You gotta cut out all this stuff so that you just show the part where I'm like, ah, and it goes, okay? Wait a minute. Ow. Oh, power bar is a little finicky. Oh, for crying out loud. Well, there we go. Just like that, my friends. Hey, look at that. G-Sync showed up working right away. G-Sync display connected. So it looks like the display port connection doesn't care at all that it's running through, what is this? Like a 30 foot optical Thunderbolt cable. Freaking awesome. So there you have it. All that remains to be done now.
and all the noise stays in there. Speaking of which, Braintree. Their code for easy online payments is fantastic if you're building a mobile app and searching for a simple payments solution. With the Braintree V.0 SDK, which is one small snippet of code, you can be all set up in less than 10 minutes with their support staff ready to walk you through the process over the phone if you need them to. Their code supports Android, iOS, and JavaScript clients, and they have SDKs in seven programming languages. So with Braintree, you can offer multiple mobile payments types including PayPal, Apple Pay, Bitcoin, Venmo, cards, and more, all with that quick, single integration. And they have knowledgeable developer support if you have any questions. So to learn more and for your first $50,000 in transactions with no fees, go to braintreepayments.com slash Linus. We've got that linked in the video description. Thank you for watching Personal Update 2015 part whatever this is. Guys, if you disliked this video, hit the dislike button. But if you liked it, hit the like button. Get subscribed, maybe even consider supporting us by buying a cool shirt like this one, changing your Amazon bookmark to one with our affiliate code instructions for which are up here, or by giving us a direct monthly contribution through our community forum, which by the way, you can join and just get answers from our community's experts for nothing to your computer and tech questions. Now that you're done doing all of that stuff and you're wondering what to watch next, Check out the video we did recently where Luke determined once and for all, does cable management affect cooling performance? Go find out.